Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And yeah, I'm Dan. And this is the Wine of Serious Business Show, episode 64. Kind of a crazy show, as you can see. There's kind of a mess in front of us, but... Uh, not what we had planned originally. Not at all. We were hanging out with some friends. Uh, a friend Gavin from out of town that happened to open some really nice burgundy for us. And figured, hell, might as well do a show. So we've got some pretty show crazy stuff open. Some kind of unique stuff, you know, usually we try and do more things that are available in the market that you can check out, but this is one of the cases where we're, you know, we're into something interesting, kind of evolved into an interesting discussion, we wanted to share that experience with you guys. And interesting discussion? Yeah, like we're well, talking, but no, we were talking about, you know, where they're from, the history, like uh, our, our friend was involved right. in making one of these wines, kind of a smaller producer. But he won't film the show with us. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, some people don't like to be on camera. Some G the G-Man, like we'll just call him the G-Man because he doesn't like his name used on camera. So. so. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so what are we drinking tonight? Tonight we uh, have three burgundies. Three red burgundies, yep. Um, so, a 93 Pomard Prima Cru from Roger Rossignol. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and pour that first. I have some Better wine. clean that glass out. Um, and interesting thing, this confused me for the longest time, right? So Pomar, if you see just Pomar on the bottle, it's a village level wine. To call it a Premier Cru, usually that's referring to a specially classified vineyard. Um, but when it's named like this, that means it's a blend of Premier Cru vineyards around the village of Pomar. Kind of confu actually, Burgundy naming is so confusing for both of us still. It's pretty bad, yeah. But, uh, and this has been open for about two and a half hours at this point, yeah? I'm going to do an off-camera pour here, too. Oh, yeah. Surprising, uh, no sediment in this bottle. Wow, that is surprising. Filter, do you know? Lightly. All right, lightly filter. Yeah, our friend, our, our friend the G-Man had a hand in making this wine. Told us about doing punch downs manually by foot and by, by butt. Yeah, yeah. by butt. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, just other things, you know, picking the grapes in the vineyard and, and whatever. And a personal connection, right? You spend that time with the winemaker, you spend that time involved in it yourself. There's a personal connection. And this has actually opened up quite a bit since we had it a little earlier. Absolutely. Since. So we, we had this village level, the same producer's village level pomard uh, from 90 earlier. Pretty light uh, in character, and this is darker in character to that, you know. Yeah, I'm getting like some sour cherries on the nose. Sour, sour dark cherries. Yeah, like yeah. Dark, sure. dark, darker in this, for me in this. A little bit of tree bark, I'm leaning towards oak, yeah. so it's probably a little bit of the oak touch from the, from the barrels put in. You said not a lot of new oak on these, right? Right. So are, is it the big, big like tanks, or is it normal barrels? Barrels, oh, okay. uh, small uh, Bur Burgundian uh, barrels, barrique. Okay, okay. Or fou. But pretty musty. Definitely yeah. the age is completely clear on the nose. This is old wine. Um, yeah. But not like... But uh, the, tree bark, the tree bark and dark cherry. But not pretty, super oxidized, right? When you think no, about, no. about another wine, like, you probably can't see all that well, but it's not like super orange or any of that. Yeah. And this is where the age really shows nice. Like, it's, it's just soft and even all the way across the palate. The structural elements play but they're balanced and, and subtle. Mm -hmm. and, and there's like really, really nice red fruit there that leads into like a tartar, or, or turns tart towards the finish. The acidity rises up, plays really nice, and then the uh, tannins are, there is no grip to the tannins, but they are there and just sort of reside in the cheeks and in the sides of the tongue. Um, really gentle wine, very smooth. Yeah, I'm getting like a citrus note too, I'm getting like some oranges along with the sour cherries, and one of the, one of the things we were saying in the discussion earlier, you know, like the tannins don't get grippy at any point. It's just kind of like a squeeze on the palate. Like they're, they, you know, they're definitely palpable. They dry out the mouth a little bit at the end. There's a little bit of acidity playing there. A little mouth water action going on. Yeah. But it's balanced and and pretty delicate all the way through. Delicious wine, and no doubt, like if we're gonna score these, you know, where you go with this? The, Hard. The, the flavors, the flavors don't play out. Uh, there, there's no like complexity that you're sort of hoping for with this like there is some definite age characteristics and the fruit here is really nice and fully intact still I, mm -hmm. I feel oh, totally, totally. Um, I'm getting some strawberry notes too now that I think about it some more some strawberries yeah the, there's like a real nice red like burst of red fruit right initially 90 points for me it's 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 absolutely delicious and completely fun as a uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here 
whatever. It's an interesting experience. It's right? an interesting yeah. experience, yeah. Um, Absolutely delicious, though. Less for me. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 89 minus. Um, not not as much excitement for you for whatever for, for whatever reason the flavor flavor profiles aren't grabbing me as much. But I'm I'm definitely impressed with how well it's been integrated. Definitely an enjoyable drink and uh, and and. It's kind of exciting to get to try this stuff. So thanks, thanks, sir, for yeah. being generous enough to share this with us. For me, for me here, the the ninety points comes from the balance and, sure. and the way that the acidity rises up. Like, probably gonna get hate from my friends over over like how oh, Chaz like an acidity and a delicate wine, whatever. But it's, <laughs> it's this is really nice. You have both sides, right? You know? Yeah, I, I can understand both sides. <laughs> All right. What do we have here? Two thousand little. Man, I feel guilty even rinsing with this. Was it 2000 Echezo from uh, Jean Marc Milo? Milo? How, how, would, how would the French say it? Milo? 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 All right. Um, so, pretty awesome treat. It's not often that we get to drink Grand Cru Red Burgundy. Um, so, this is really exciting. You said 2000 was not one of the best years in Burgundy? Not a great year. But, okay. Okay. Why is that? Uh, just, I don't know all the details of the vintage, just not a great vintage. And what inspired you to pick up this bottle in particular? Uh, it was a decent price, I saw it, it was, um, looked at it, had a few bottles, it tasted good. Gets up to say, alright, awesome. Definitely darker on the nose here. Um, yeah. A little campfire sulfury nose going on too. For sure. Yeah. And, and you're getting some of that, you know, some of the oak showing through. A little bit of older wood, a little bit of forest floor going on, but not like the funky barnyard that you get out of a lot of red burgundy. Like there, this isn't right. like stink in, in any way. I don't think. Right. And there's some good like red, like some strawberries there going on. I'm getting like uh, ginger cookies too, like a little bit of a like a dark ginger note on there as well, like molasses, a little bit of molasses, a little bit of ginger. Hmm. Pretty smells, nice. Smells really tasty. Yeah. It's, yeah. Has a, has a we depth were, to the nose. And we were talking about this earlier, like the, the sort of funk that's residing in this nose is almost reminiscent of like an organ wine. Just almost. Some similarities. Just, just to see, yeah. I'd like to think that I wouldn't guess that blind. You, know, you never know. Yeah, boy, may I be fortunate enough to have Esh's own blind <laughs> someday. <that'd> be... <laughs> I've got friends that told me, uh, or that picked up blind that uh, Burgundy was Oregon. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a bigger wine, all the way across the board. Um, you know, the acidity is stronger, the fruit's bigger. There's kind of like a burst of fruit on the mid palate. Mm -hmm. Has a gentle touch in the beginning, and I say that the tannins are a lot slower to come in. Like they are, again, that more gentle, like evolved, like pressure on the sides of the palate as it slowly dries things out. But that and the flavors are really taking their sweet time. I mean, you look at the time on the thing; it's been over 10 seconds now. I'm still getting, you know, both. Both texture and uh, flavor evolution. Yeah, and what, uh, one thing I like about good quality wines is like the mid palate length on these. Sometimes it's substantial, like it's swallowed, still feels like it's in your mouth. Like the how much flavor reaction still going on in the tongue. This has that, and uh, I think yeah, the G man brought this up earlier. Is like the red grape component on this is massive. It reminds yeah. me of red grapes and skins big time. Um, yeah. Tremendous length on this. And I talk about this a lot Acid, with reason. Balance, acidity, and tannin. Yeah, the acidity's got a great touch to it. It's light, but still firm. Um, it's, it's, it's really enjoyable. It, it delivers a brightness to the mid palate, makes the mouth water all the way through. And, and, and that's really impressive, especially when coupled with the dark fruit. There's a little bit you know, of opposing forces going on there that kind of make your mind take a little bit, as well as, as really working together to, to draw the experience out. Like a, for some reason, something just reminded me of like a red fruit and like a soy component, like almost like a soy, oh. a soy sauce component. Right as you start to swallow it, and then the acidity. I don't know. It's. it's I wouldn't say that, but I can kind of yeah. see that. There's some very interesting flavors going on in this wine that I can't immediately put my finger on. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Really Exciting. Interesting. It. it I, I, don't, I don't drink enough of this to be able to accurately describe to you what. I'm tasting, like, this is a pretty damn new experience with me, like, I've had maybe 
um, I don't know how many Grand Cru Burgundies in my life. Yeah. You know, twenty. So I really, it's it's hard to describe, especially. You know, I, I don't know. That's yeah, probably less than ten for me. So thanks for sharing again. This is yeah. awesome stuff. Um, 90, Ninety-three points for me is where where I'd go with that. There's a uh, yeah, it's, it's good evolution and, uh, and and it provokes thought and you know kind of, kind of some emotion, even some excitement as the flavors evolve and as the, as the length draws. The length on this is really impressive in both structure and flavor. Um, so you know, it's a good time. Uh, uh, Ninety-one plus for me. Still fantastic. I, I agree with the evolution part, but not so. I mean, not as heavily. Um, the length here is fantastic, though, and the, the balance and the, the mid palate length is really good. Just not getting as much out of it. So, but fantastic wine. Yeah, cool stuff.